Hey guys, so today I want to talk about weight reduction. It's something I've been curious about uh, for a couple of months now actually, ever since I got one of these big boats that we call a Dodge Challenger. These cars weigh in at a curb weight between 3,800 to 4,200 pounds, depending on model and options and things like that. I have the RT model and I believe mine is around 3,900 to 4,000 pounds um, with the 5.7 in it. Now here's the thing, we've all heard the stories about people taking out their back seats and stuff like that to get a little faster track time. Although to me, it didn't really seem very feasible that, that you would even notice a difference. Well. I went ahead and started looking up the weights of some of the components in these cars to see how much I could feasibly lighten it. So what I found was the back seat people claim weighs between 40 to 50 pounds and then a combo of the spare tire, the jack and all those things, you're looking at another 30 to 45 pounds. And then you have the trunk liner, which is the carpeted piece back here that has the foam in it. And I can tell you that thing's heavier than I thought it would be. It's a good 10 to 15 pounds probably. So all in all, if you remove your back seat, your spare tire, all the tire tools, and the trunk liner, you could lighten these cars up by almost 100 pounds. Removing the seat backs out of the back seat in these vehicles actually is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, you just have a few nuts and bolts to take care of. Now I've already removed mine, but just to show you, you have these nuts that come off here. You have this one here and two over there. And then this is what it'll look like once you remove the trunk liner and the spare tire and all that junk out of here. You actually gain a little bit of storage room down in this area. That's where I keep my detail bag and things like that. Of course, your battery stored back here. And this is what it looks like once you remove that liner. Now, while 100 pounds may not sound like that much when you're in the 4,000 pound range vehicle, just consider would you normally load up three big bags of dog food in your car before you decide to go take it to race? Now, speaking of gaining times and things like that, the, uh, you know, one of the main advantages too of lightening up a car is handling, braking, you know, if you're swinging the rear end out and stuff like that, just imagine if, if you have an extra 100 pound weight laying in your trunk and all of a sudden you get rid of that because that's what you're looking at doing here. But anyway, to get mathematical with it and look at the physics side of it, I am going to show you now how to determine your current power to weight ratio and then translate into horsepower what a weight reduction would do for you. So for that, uh, let's go to the desk. Okay. So to get started, we need to learn how to figure out the power to weight ratio. So what you're gonna need is your current curb weight of your vehicle and your current horsepower. Don't worry about being too exact. Again, most of this is just a ballpark figure, but it'll get you close. Okay, so for my car, a 2015 Dodge Challenger RT with a 5.7 liter Hemi, the most information I found online is that it's somewhere between 3,800 pounds and 4,000 pounds curb weight. Okay. So for the sake of just learning how to do this, let's go ahead and go by the numbers I found online, which are 3,834 pounds curb weight and a stock horsepower of 372 horsepower at 5,200 RPM. Now again, we know with Dodge that most of these numbers are underrated and that the Challenger is really closer to 400 horsepower. But again, for the sake of the video and just to give you instruction on how to do the calculations, I'm gonna go by the book numbers and see what we come up with. So to figure out your power to weight ratio, you're gonna go ahead and take the curb weight of the vehicle, which in the case of the Challenger, is 3,834 pounds, and this is for the 5.7 liter. That's the claimed curb weight. Then we need the claimed horsepower, which from what I found is 372 horsepower at the crank. So to get your weight to power ratio, what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the weight by the horsepower. So 3,834 pounds, divided by 372 horsepower. Now that's gonna give us a figure of 10.30645. Now what this number means, this number is your pounds per horsepower. So in other words, for every 10.3 pounds of weight, we have one horsepower. So to find your horsepower equivalent after weight reduction, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, we're taking 100 pounds off the vehicle by removing all the things I've removed. That would bring our weight down to 3,734 pounds, right? So you go ahead and take that number, divide that by the stock horsepower. That will give us a new weight to power ratio. In this case, it's gonna come out to 
0376. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take the old weight of 3834. We're going to divide it by the new power to weight ratio, 10.0376. Now when we divide that out, that's going to give us 381.96 horsepower. Now, to find your potential equivalent gain, you just subtract this from this. The stock horsepower is 372, so we're going to take the figure of 381.96, subtract the actual horsepower of 372, and that's going to give us 9.96 horsepower difference. So basically what we're saying here is that if you can lighten your car by 100 pounds, that would be the equivalent of gaining 9.96 horsepower. Okay, I hope I haven't confused you too much. Basically all you're doing, once again, is you're taking your stock weight, dividing it by your stock horsepower to give you a weight to power ratio. Then you do your new potential weight after your weight reduction, divide that by the stock horsepower, that gives you your new weight to power ratio. Then to solve and see what the horsepower equivalent is, you simply take the old weight with the new ratio, divide the two out, that gives you your new horsepower equivalent rating, and then just subtract the difference from stock to see what your horsepower equivalent gain would be. So basically what you're doing, you know, you're, you're actually not gaining this horsepower. A lot of it's theoretical. There's a lot of physics and math involved, but it essentially just gives you kind of an idea of what kind of power difference you might feel by weight reduction. The, the whole reason that a 3,500 pound car at 400 horsepower is going to outrun a 4,000 pound car at 400 horsepower. Because a 4,000 pound, 400 horsepower car, like our Challengers, is basically running about a 10 to 1 weight to horsepower ratio. And again, that would mean for every 10 pounds, you've got one horsepower. So you reduce it 100 pounds, you're looking at about a 10 horsepower gain. And while for some people that may sound kind of silly, you can go purchase a throttle body for $500 that'll give you 10 to 15 horsepower, or you can just reduce your car by 100 pounds and get the same thing for free. Or combine the two, and then you've got an equivalent of 20 horsepower gain. So as far as if I've noticed a difference or not, um, I feel like I have a little bit, but mainly when I'm braking or when I'm taking turns. And again, I mean, anytime you can get 100 pounds out of your trunk, you're going to notice a little bit of difference when you go swinging the rear end of the car around or if you slam on your brakes. I don't know. Well, again, I hope this wasn't too confusing and I hope it was helpful to some people. Again, this is one of these things I've been thinking about for a while. Never knew if there was any real logic behind it, but apparently there is. Because if you can rip 100 pounds out and it's the same as a 10 horsepower gain, well, why not? For me, it just gives me an excuse not to have people riding in my back seat anymore, and that's good enough for me. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I would love it if you would click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and if you want to be notified of future videos, you can click the little bell, and it will alert you anytime I post something new. I appreciate you watching, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.